All right, so I'm Dylan Terman, and uh, this is my COSOL analysis project for Ethnic Studies 112. Uh, so for my project, I chose to make an Instagram account uh, with memes about the text, uh, at COSOL memes on Instagram. So yeah, so I made three memes, um, and I tried to like make memes. Uh, I, I obviously couldn't make a meme about every single topic discussed in the book, so I tried to make uh, the memes about like topics that were most relevant to what we talked about in class, and also just most relevant to the story um, in general. So yeah, so here we go. So uh, so this is the first one. It's a it's a picture of a guy slapping uh, slapping some tape on like this leaking cylinder, like the cylinder that's leaking water. And so you, the guy represents uh, the federal government. You can see it right there. You can see his name. And um, so the tape, like in the water that's pouring out, kind of represents uh, the, uh, the the socioeconomic problems that were like plaguing people in the uh, in the South Bronx neighborhoods. And so the, the federal government is trying to stop these problems by using the uh, revitalization projects, uh, which is represented by the, uh, the flex tape. And it kind of just shows how, like, the government was trying to, like, fix these problems using, like, super weak and super, like, temporary solutions that were obviously never going to work. And uh, Kozel talks about this on page 213, where he talks about, um, like, yeah, like, the government trying to fix these problems with these projects, uh, like cleaning up the parks or building new residential buildings. Um, and the plans always end up falling through because the government just ends up giving up hope and, and just stopping the projects and just forgetting about them. And um, instead of blaming the government, a lot of people end up blaming people of the South Bronx just because they, all, they have this pessimistic attitude always towards any government project because they've seen so many fail. And people see that attitude and kind of think, oh, they don't care. They've given up. Um, and I think it's kind of common for us to like place blame on people who are struggling and like I think it's common for people to believe like, oh, it's their fault, like it's their fault they're in there, they're in that mess. Um, and I think the more we think like that, uh, I think it's like easier to like fail to recognize any other possible factors that might lead to uh, to a situation like that. And I think in the book, the government fails to recognize one main factor of of all these projects failing is that oppression is ingrained in our society and our history. It's built up like it's not just sudden; it, it's built up over you know, centuries. And um, we also talked about this in uh, Marilyn Fry's article called Oppression, where she talks about like oppression being like a cage made up of individual transgressions that add up over time. Um, so I think like I can compare that to the citizens in the South Bronx, like they're living in a cage like that. And instead of like taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture, the upper class kind of chooses to blame any other reason they can find like drug addictions or crime just because it's easier it's easier than actually trying to find like the root cause of that problem and trying to fix that root cause um so yeah so that was the first one uh so here's the second one it's a uh, it's a picture of a guy trying to press a button he's trying to decide between two buttons to press and um he doesn't yeah he's kind of having a tough time deciding so uh the guy represents the uh, mainstream media and uh, he's trying to choose between the two buttons, and the two buttons are uh, one button. The button on the left is unbiased coverage of the lower class, and the button on the right is uh, this is simplifying and covering up the problems of the poor. So it kind of shows how like mainstream media like has like has trouble really having like unbiased uh, coverage of of what's really going on in society, and a lot of times they just choose to like completely disregard and not really focus on the lower class. Um, so yeah, so Kozel actually talks about this kind of in the back half of the novel, where he like he talks about the bias in the media media's coverage of the lower class, and uh, he talks about like side effects. And one of the side effects is that poor like poor people are often portrayed as subhuman or not human. And he backs this up on page 144, where he discusses numerous re news reports that have described poor people as savages and maggots. So um, so I kind of agree with Kozel in that regard. Where, like, if you watch the news, like, you can always see, like, these themes of, like, us versus them. So I get that part. But I, I one thing I disagree with is um, I don't really think it's the media's coverage that does the harm. I think it's the media's lack of coverage. You never really see these stories about, like, these poor people and the lower class. So it's almost like they don't exist. And you see a bunch of stories about middle class and upper class problems. But you really never see any stories focusing on the problems of the lower class and the less fortunate. And, um... I, we, I thought this was interesting because we actually read about this in uh, Gregory Mancios' article about the media where he talks about um, tactics that the media uses to dehumanize and disregard the lower class. Uh, and like some of these tactics are intentionally leaving out stories about the poor, reducing their hardships to just like numbers and statistics, and also unfairly representing them. 
which is to say, like, when there are stories about them, it's only about drug addicts or uh, criminals. So that that way, everyone, whenever you see any poor person, you just assume, oh, probably a drug addict, probably a criminal. And obviously that isn't true, but that's like what the media kind of leads you to believe. So yeah, so that's the second meme. So the third and final meme is a, uh, it's a picture of Spider-Man. Oh, it's a picture of Spider-Man, and he's being carried through the streets of New York uh, by his fans, and they're, they're saying, carefully, he's a hero. And I kind of compare that to uh, citizens of the South Bronx after uh, after George Calderon died. So uh, so yeah, so George Calderon was uh, obviously the drug lord of the uh, of the South Bronx, and uh, he was like this guy who was super respected, but also like a lot of people were scared of him. And you can see this on page eighty six, where uh, Juan Castro, who was the poet, says uh, says he was deeply mourned after his murder, and then one sentence later he he compares him to the devil. So it kind of shows that he was like this guy with like a super split personality like anybody could think anything of him um and so so yeah so after i read about Cal calderon for the first time i was kind of confused as to why kozel would include him um because it kind of like went against everything he was trying to debunk like he's trying to debunk like all these stereotypes about lower class communities relying on the drugs and crime um but then he's like including like this story about this like crime drug lord who was who was like a centerpiece in the South Bronx. So at first I was kind of confused as to why he would even include Calderon. But then when I like took a step back and really thought about it, it, um, it makes sense because they didn't really embrace him because they want, like they liked him. They embraced him because they needed him. He was like, Calderon was the only person with power that ever gave anything back to, uh, to the community. And, um, like he like stimulated the economy with his drug trade. He, uh, like, he gave a lot of people jobs. He provided people with, like, their only source of income. So, like, I think that he showed more people, more, more care for the people of the South Bronx than, uh, than the government or the upper class ever did. So I think when you look at it through that lens, it makes sense as to why they would look up to him and why they would treat him with, like, such respect. It has nothing to do with the fact that he has, that he was a drug lord or a crime lord. It was just due to the fact that they had to rely on somebody, and that somebody was him, because the government and the upper class weren't doing anything to help them out. Um, so, yeah, so that was the third meme. Uh, that was the last meme. And, yeah, so that's my project. Uh, Kozel Memes on Instagram. Check it out. It's a good time. And, uh, yeah, so thank you for watching.